A couple times a year, I always like to give you a sneak peek into a mastermind meeting, and I only save the best for you as a loyal listener. Enjoy. Over to special guest, Andy Neary. Um, this guy, I I'm going to be honest, I don't know how we met, um, but somehow we found a way to each other. Um, I guess that's what marketing business love does, right? Opposites track. So we found each other, and when we started talking, I said, "Dude, I want you on the on the um, on the podcast." We got on the podcast. Um, well, as I already told you, he kind of lit my world up when it came to uh, storytelling in ways that I had never thought. The book that Donald Miller, if you don't read the first or chapter or two and go, "Oh my gosh, this makes sense." I don't know. It did. It does for me and a lot of other people. I want to turn it over. He used to be a pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers, now an author, now a consultant. Now he talks. And the thing is, if you go to his website, he specifically lists insurance agents on there as one of the top two people he helps. Turn it over to you, Andy Neary. How are you doing, brother? I am good, Jason. How are you, my friend? I'm doing super. I'm super. Do you need the screen or anything? Yeah, if you could let me share, that would be awesome. No problemo. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, Jason is correct. I was fortunate to spend a couple of years in the Milwaukee Brewers organization, but as you can tell, I, uh, there's a reason I sell insurance and I have <laughs> 20 some years. I didn't make it. And so, um, I'm excited to talk to you guys today. In fact, uh, I saw the name Mike Fusco pop up. I had a chance to meet Mike a couple of years ago. Good guy. Real good guy. Um, but here's what, here's what I'm going to go over guys. So, um, Jason's talked about story brand a lot. I actually, it has changed my career so much that not only did I go out and become a certified guide by StoryBrand, I ended up stopping my, I ended up selling my book of business and starting a business coaching other advisors on how to craft a better message because I saw a very big problem in the industry. People do not know how to market in this industry. And so I said, I'm going to help fix that. Uh, my epiphany was, quick story, we moved to Colorado from Wisconsin nine years ago. And I found myself in a market where nobody knows who I am. I said, oh, crap. So I had a choice. I could do it the way I was taught, which was the traditional cold call, uh, go pound the pavement door to door, or I could try something different. And I said, I'm going to go see what other industries are doing when it comes to marketing. And I'm going to go take those principles and apply them to my business. And lo and behold, it worked. And so, Jason, you obviously understand you've had a podcast for a decade and so today we teach insurance professionals like you how to do this. And as Jason said, actually, that is all we work with. We don't work with anybody oh, else because everybody on our team that. comes from the industry. That's important to us. So I am a reader. I don't know if you guys are a reader. I'm going to throw several books at you today. Number if one. Reader, if you're a reader, put yes in the chat. If you put yes in the chat, if you're a reader, because we might send you something uh, special. Go ahead. Awesome. First book, Jason Reference, Building a Story Brand. That is what changed my career. Some of you have probably already read that. I believe yeah. it was Chris Green. You referenced Business Made Simple. That's his second book right there. Go, Actually, third book. You want to build a good business? Donald Miller's got a great book there. The this is the second one. one that was phenomenal too, Marketing Made Simple. This is one of the most practical ways to build a marketing strategy. Okay. And the third, fourth book I'm going to talk about today is this one right here. They ask, you answer. That's our buddy. We know that guy. You know Marcus Sheridan. So oh, we, yeah, we, she's hey good Andy, friend. I got a quick question for you. What about his most recent book? Which ones, Marcus? Uh, no, uh, Donald's. Oh, the, to, is it the Hero's Journey? No, it's How to Build a Small Business. Okay, how is that? By the way, I actually have not read that one. Is that an offshoot of this one or no? No, it's a whole new, like, he basically takes the airplane and breaks the six divisions down. Like, hey, what? That's, like you know what? That's earth. why I didn't get it. I saw the book and saw the airplane. Yep. And I just saw, thought it was a revision of, of what he had already written. Okay, I'll go get it then. Thank you. Hmm. So here's, the, here's what we're going to cover today, guys. I try to keep things very simple. I want to help you, help give you guys clarity on three questions. I believe effective marketing comes down to three questions. Who are you talking to? What are you saying to them? And how are you saying? Now, there is a fourth question. I'm not going to get into a whole lot today, which is the where are you saying it? But today we're going to focus on who are you talking to? What are you saying? Uh, how are, uh, What are you saying to them? And where are you saying to them? A lot of what, what you're going to see today is uh, several of the stuff, the things come from StoryBrand. Being a guide, I have the opportunity to share it. I can use it. But I'm going to cover some things, guys, because I think marketing done right does not have to be very hard. It's actually some subtle shifts 
in the verbiage and what you're saying that can change everything. And one thing I'm going to dive into a little bit today is content. If you are not creating content right now for your business, you are falling behind. Content has become the secret sauce of growing a business today. Unless your business is at a place where it is 100% referrals and you don't need to do anything else, content has to be a must uh, with your marketing strategy. Because I got in the industry right after my baseball career in 2001. I was given two pieces of advice. Dye your hair gray so you look older. <laughs> and go get a con uh, membership at a country club you cannot afford because that's where all the big decision makers hang out. Well, I'm here to tell you guys in 2023, this thing right here is the modern day country club. This is where everybody's hanging out. And we need to be there too. So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to cover, go across a couple of our modules we teach, but we're just going to stay very high level at who are you talking to? What are you saying? And where are you saying it? So you guys ready? This is going to be very workshop-ish. So we're going to, we're going to dive right in. I'm ready. All right. So let me share my screen. First thing we're going to dive into is identifying your ideal prospect. This is the who. A couple things I just want to talk about where I see challenges with marketing in the insurance industry today is number one, we try to be all things to all people. You cannot be all things to all people. When I got in the industry, I was told all prospects are good prospects. It's revenue. Go get it. Not, not so true anymore. Second problem. If you try speaking to everyone, you end up speaking to no one. Mm -hmm. This is how marketing turns vanilla and boring and bland. This is the challenge the big, big, big corporate people in our industry have. They, they're bland. I'm guessing none of you are the big behemoths, so you have an opportunity to be very, very specific about who you're talking to. And here's, here's the other challenge. When I got in, and I think it's still this way, it's definitely this way in the health and commercial insurance industries. This is how we were taught to prospect. Go buy a big list of leads and then just hammer them with calls and emails. Now, that still can be part of your approach today. However, it can't be your only approach. Here's why. Cold calling is not as easy as it used to be. I think we should all we can all agree with that. Does anybody know how many calls it takes today to reach what get one prospect on the phone? Five. Just to get them on the phone. Any guesses? Ten. Eighteen. That makes sense. Statistics today are 18 calls before you get somebody on the phone. Now, here's where it got a little harder post-2020. We're calling cell phones more than we ever have. If you guys get a number on your phone you don't recognize, what do you do? Not answer it. You let it go to voicemail. Worse yet, what is your phone? What might your phone tell you about the number? If it's a spam. Could be spam. Or unknown. And that's where it's just becoming harder to cold call these days. So not that we shouldn't be doing it. We've got to mix other things in with it. And in my opinion, and I've seen it, what it's done for our business, content creates the credibility before you even walk in the door. Mm -hmm. But we got to know who we're talking to. So what we're going to dive into is an exercise we call the five-star prospect profile. I'm a sports junkie, so a lot of our, our exercises have sports ties to them. Just like you're trying to find the blue chip athlete here, we need to identify the, the perfect prospect for you. So here's where I want you guys to start. Who's your favorite client today? Think about that. I want you to think about your favorite client today. If you're in the B2B space, what company is your favorite? You sell B2C personal lines. Who is that one person you wish you could replicate? Okay, I like that. This is the one that lets you do your best work. Now, if I ask the opposite question, you'd probably be able to do this even faster. Who's the one client you wish you could get rid of? Most people would have an answer immediately, but you don't need to do that. Here's where we have to go next. If you know who you love working with, who your favorite client is, the one you want to replicate, now you got to ask yourself the question, why? Here's the only answer you cannot give because I make the most money on. There yeah. are other reasons you love working with this individual or this company. 
We identify prospects two ways, demographics and psychographics. Everyone on this call has been taught how to identify a prospect demographically. Size, location, revenue, number of employees, number of vehicles if you sell personal, whatever it is. We have been taught how to identify somebody psychographically, or excuse me, demographically. But here's why demographics alone can't make an ideal prospect. I've never had an advisor I've worked with tell me, Andy, my favorite client is ABC Manufacturing because they're a manufacturer with 75 employees. The owner's a jerk. He never listens to anything I say. He doesn't want to take my advice, but they're a manufacturer, so I love them. Demographics alone can't identify an ideal prospect. You need psychographics. Think of it this way. Any sports fans here, demographics is an athlete's height, weight, speed. The stuff that looks good on paper. The psychographics is how does he operate on third and one in the fourth quarter? What makes her such a good elite athlete up here? That's psychographics. With oh, psychographics, you want to think about this. With your favorite client, who are these people? What do they believe in? What do they stand for? How do they make decisions? And when I say what do they believe and stand for, guys, I'm not talking politics and religion here. I'm talking when it comes to what you do, what do they believe? This is why they're your favorite, because you and that client are psychographically aligned. Mm -hmm. This is where the gold is. If you can figure out why that individual or that company is your favorite because of these reasons... It becomes a game of going out and finding others like them. By the way, total side tangent tip here. When you know the psychographics of your best clients, it makes asking for referrals a heck of a lot easier. Here's why. Here's how most people ask for referrals. Hey, do you know any other businesses that could use our help? What does the client do? Well, let me think about it. Get back to you. They never get back to you because they're busy. They don't have time. However, if you said this, hey, here's why I love working with you. And you rattle off all the psychographic features of that client because you believe this. This is how you make decisions. This is what you do. Do you have any business peers just like you? They all hang out with people like them. Makes so much easier for people to make introductions for you. Okay, so now, you know who your favorite client is, you know why. Now we need to answer question number three. What problem do you solve? Now, here's where I want to go with this for a second. Every one of you solves many problems. But I, I know for a fact there is a problem that lights you up. There's one problem you love solving better than anything else. This is the area where you are in your zone of genius. Write that down. What's that one problem? If you could solve over and over and over again, life would be good. It's good stuff, Andy. Appreciate it. I, I, I want to go right into the tactics. Yeah, I love it. Now, quick point about problems, gang. This is important. There are three layers of problems. This comes right from StoryBrand. There's yep. an external problem. There's an internal problem. And there's a philosophical. I'm going to focus on external and internal. Philosophical or uh, external problem is the obvious problem. Maybe it's expensive insurance. Maybe it's poor coverage, whatever it is, right? But what's more important is that internal problem. This is the problem the prospect is dealing with. Imagine them looking in the mirror at themselves what are they saying about the external problem that they may not be willing to admit to you? What are all the things they're asking themselves, the doubts they may not be willing to admit? When it comes to marketing, if you can get at the internal problem, this is where you start or when you start renting space in your prospect's brain. When you get inside their head with your marketing, this is when they start taking action because they're going, that's exactly how I feel right now. 
You see, we often keep the marketing at a high level external. If you go a layer deeper and start saying, but this is how it's impacting you. These are the doubts you have because of this. This is how you're feeling because of expensive insurance or poor coverage. That's when you start getting at their emotions. <clears throat> we live in an industry that we believe a lot of people buy based on logic because most of our industry is numbers based, right? With rates and premiums and coverage. But at the end of the day, people still buy on emotion. They back it up with logic with the numbers. Here's how we know that to be true. How many of you have put in front of a prospect a better price, better coverage, and they stayed right where they're at? <laughs> all guilty of that. We're all guilty of that, right? It's because they buy an emotion. <clears throat> so when you talk about problems you solve, don't forget about the internal problems too. The emotions, the feelings, those are important. Now, once you know the problem you have that you love to solve, the one you love to attack, you got to come up with a process to fix it. This needs to be a process you can rinse and repeat. The game changer here for you in marketing and sales is when you develop a process to solve that problem repeatedly, the game changes a little bit because you're now interviewing prospects as much as they're interviewing you. Yeah. You're actually trying to see if they're a fit for you as much as they're seeing if you're a fit for them. I challenge some of my clients. So I work with some commercial benefit advisors who go after larger business and a good year for them might only be six or eight new accounts. They don't need that many new accounts to have a great year because of the revenue per account. And if I know that, if I know I only need six to eight wins, what I tell them to do is go out and tell prospects, I'm only looking to work with six new clients this year. My goal today to see is to see if you're a fit for our process. That's, I like that. I never heard that. Actually. It com now, if you're in a volume game, you're probably not going to use that, right? But no. if you're in a game where you don't need that many wins to, go, to, build a, to have a great year, why not talk about that? Because your job is to find the best people. I had a friend, I'll share this with you guys. I had a good friend of mine in the health insurance industry who represented a third party administrator, TPA. His job every year was to go out and sell 12 new groups because the TPA knew that if they take on any more than 12, it kind of waters down their services. So his job was to go find 12 every year. So what he would do is he would literally go out and sell, I have 12 gold coins. My job is to see who's going to get the 12 gold coins. Every year, he would sell all 12 groups on January 1st because of that. And he would spend the rest of the year going out and finding the next 12 for the next January 1. Mm -hmm. Selling with exclusivity sometimes is not a bad deal, especially if you've got a process. Makes sense. Now, the last part, the last question we got to answer. Now, I'm going to share this with you. I apologize. I skipped this. It also helps to come up with a name for your process. So I'll give you an example. Complete Game Consulting is the name of my company. The process we teach, you're getting curriculum right now out of the process, is called the Complete Game Marketing Playbook. That's four phases. Clarity, capture, content, convert. Right now we're in the clarity phase. But we came up with a name for it, and we called it the Playbook. The Complete Game Marketing Playbook. We now sell the playbook. We sell our process. So if you have a process, think about a name you could give it because at that point, you're now outselling the process. Changes everything. The final question in the five-star prospect profile is what result does your process create? So I want you to think about what we just did. I know we did probably a very quick version of this, but if you know who your favorite client is, you know why. You know what problem you solve better than anybody else. You know the process you use to solve it. And you know the result the process creates. What you have just done is build the foundation of your marketing message. Here's why. If we go into the marketing message itself, now we're getting into the, what are you saying? So who are you going after? Who are you talking to? 
what are you saying? I am going to give you the entire book, Building a Story Brand, on one slide. Here it is. Storytelling, as has been used for thousands of years, is told this way. There is a hero who has a goal, who has a problem keeping them from the goal. Therefore, they need a guide who's got a plan, a process to avoid, to avoid failure and have success. I just ruined every movie you'll ever watch, every book you'll ever read from here on out because they are all the same. Look what we just did, though, by building our ideal prospect. What, did, what parts of the story did we uncover? We uncovered the who, the problem, the plan, and success. Now, here's a key part of storytelling, guys. This is a little shift, one little shift in marketing in the insurance industry that changes everything. Who's the hero? I cheat when I say this, but it's the client. It's the prospect. It's the, yeah, or the, the prospect or yes. either one, right? Yes, yes, yes. That one little shift. If you look at most of the marketing in our industry, who are, who's the hero? We make ourselves the hero. I trained my producers until this book, telling them that they need us. You know, they like they need us. And they knew it, it was a guide, but almost putting us as the one that's on the pedestal. And it was 100%. like after reading Donald's books. I'm like, what the hell are we even thinking about that? We've all done it. We've all been yeah. taught that way. Right. Mm -hmm. When I asked the question, as Jason just answered, nine out of 10 times, people say, well, we are. No, right. your prospect's the hero. I thought so. You too. see, you make this shift, this one little shift in your marketing message, guys, it changes everything. Just tell the prospect story, not yours. I think it also makes a shift in your culture of your agency. You know, 100%. when you get when you get everybody understanding that guys, we're not the hero here. We're the guide to make them the hero. That that kind of starts to change things. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you're good, man. This is here's here's a, another little tip, guys, on storytelling. I'll how one simple thing, Jason. You were talking about your website. You go look at 98% of the website in this industry. The headline, the biggest, the title I see when I come to the site, it's talking about the agency nine out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. If I come to a site and all I see is some aspirational statement, the success I, the prospect could have, it's going to make your website 10 times better. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where everything changes, guys. Your marketing, your job in marketing now is just to go tell the story as often as you can. The exercise we just did, we came up with the problem you love solving, but let's face it, you guys probably attack a lot of problems. Use the story framework to tell the story. Now, here's another little sales tip that comes out of this. If I'm sitting in front of a prospect in a discovery call, first meeting, whatever you, whatever you call it, I'm going to ask four questions. No matter what fact finding I'm doing, I'm asking four questions. And here are the four. Number one, what's your goal right now? Number two, what would it mean if you could achieve it? Number three, what's the problem keeping you from it? Number four, how's that affecting you right now? Or how's that affecting your business? So it's, what's your goal right now? What would it mean if you could achieve it? What's the problem keeping you from it? How's it affecting you right now? Here's why those are so important, guys. Follow me. What part of the story did we just uncover by asking, what's your goal right now? The with the goal part, right? Yeah, the goal with the goal. What would it mean if you could achieve it? What part of the story is that? Like needs guide with a plan or I mean. No, if you could problem? achieve, what would it mean if you could achieve it? What part, what are we painting right now? That, that... Way over here, success. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It doesn't go in order. Yeah, this doesn't go in order. Now, 
Obvious question. What's the problem keeping you from it? What part of the story is that? As a problem. As a problem. And how is it affecting you right now? What part of the story is that? Avoid failure. Avoid failure. What did we just do, guys? You asked those four questions. You have one job now. Who's the guide and what's the plan? Oh. If you ask those four questions in a discovery meeting, they're giving you the entire story outside of the guide, which is going to be you. And the plan you're going to give them to have that, achieve that success and avoid that failure. It makes selling so much easier because one of the best things or the most important things you got to do in prospecting in the sales process is sell their story. Keep it to their story. I get, I, I, I get angry at our clients because they do such a good job of making it all about the prospect and the sales process. And then they get to the proposal and what do they do? They make it all about them. Keep it to their story. So this is the what you should be saying. Everybody track with me on that? Yeah. So we know who you're going after. Now we know how to use story to tell their story. The last part I'm going to cover is how are you saying it? And this is the fun part. We call it creating championship content. See, that's us, guys. That's us. We're champions. Everybody here in the mastermind, <laughs> uh, we call ourselves champions. So that's it. Now, let me, I do have to take a minute, guys, to sell you on content. Because I know not everybody's sold on content. but let's We're let's, big let's, contenters around here. But let's just talk so you know. about this. Yeah. Guys, people can't buy what they can't see. That's a, that's a truth. If I can't see you these days, and, and I'm talking a lot of this on here, I don't know you exist. The other truth right now is your prospects expect value before they ever hire you. They want value out of you. They're not just going to give you the business. You got to earn it today. And here's the other reality. Sales is about who knows you, likes you, and trusts you. We all know that. Relationships are built on trust. We all know that. And let's be honest, building a relationship isn't as easy as it used to be prior to the pandemic. That's the truth. Think about this, guys. Prior to the pandemic, if I said, how are you going to build a relationship with a prospect? I'll call it how are you going to schmooze a prospect? What would you do? Go play golf, buy them lunch, take them to the ball game, right? We don't do that as much anymore. We don't. How about this though? What if you could get them to know you before they ever meet you? This is where content comes in. And this is what I want to talk to you about today, guys. What I am referring to is what we call exponential awareness. Exponential awareness leads to exponential growth. One to many prospecting. I want you to think about this for a sec. If I pick up the phone and I call one prospect today, how many prospects can I call with one call? One. One. I go door to door. I, I was taught how to go door to door back in the day. I go door to door. How many doors can I knock on at one time? One. With content, with exponential awareness, you can get one message in front of hundreds, thousands of people at once using platforms like social media, email, webinars, public speaking. These are all forms of exponential awareness. The name of the game today is to leverage exponential awareness to get your message out far, fast, and wide. Because here is another truth. It is as much about who knows you today as it is who you know. We're going to get a lot of people to know who you are. We call it the triple crown of exponential awareness. Any baseball fans in the room? I bet. Anybody know what the three statistics are in baseball that determine the triple crown? Batting average, home run, and RBIs. There you go. That's baseball. We're talking about content triple crown. This is it right here. What are you saying it? What are you saying? How are you saying it? Where are you saying it? We just talked about the what. We're going to combine the how and the where. Here we go. Now, here's where you're going to get stuck with content. Andy, how do I create it? What should I say and where should I post it? So let's talk about content for a second, guys. I, I try to keep it very simple so, so it's easy to understand and easy to execute. The how I should post, just know when people digest content, they digest it three ways. Some people love watching video. I'm a big YouTube guy. I do a lot of personal development on YouTube. I love to watch videos. Some people love reading books. 
And some people love listening to auto, audio. That's why audiobooks and podcasts exist today. Right? So people just like to digest content across these three mediums. Now, if you can create content across all three, awesome. If you're just getting started, pick one. We have clients who will not hit record on a video. Fine. Start writing. Now, let's talk about what you should say. We teach five categories of content creation. I'm not saying these are the end-all, be-all, but we have seen these work very well. And I'm going to go in reverse order as I go through each one. Let's start at the bottom. As far as the, the category, the what you should say, it start with calls to action. Those are the easiest to know. Calls to action is just where you're going to ask your audience to do something. A very common call to action might be if you host webinars. Hey, register for our webinar. It's a call to action. Jason, you had a couple calls to action in early slides. You're telling your audience to do something. You don't want to put everything out as a call to action, but once in a while, sprinkle a call to action. Heck, it might be, let's get on the phone with me. Schedule a call. Case studies. Another very obvious one, right? Let people know you are helping your clients win. Share case studies. It's important you do that because if I'm a prospect and I see you helping somebody else, I start to believe you can help me. Now, here is a very important key on case studies. If you do them as PDFs, white papers, video, we like to spend a lot of our time on the results we're creating with a case study, right? But you got to spend an equal amount of time talking about the problem they were dealing with in the first place. You got to tell them, here's what our client was struggling with. Here's why they came to us. Here's what we did to help them. Probably your process. And then here's the result they, it created. Here's why that's important. If I see a case study and I'm a prospect and all I see is results, I can't tie that back to my current situation. Great results. I don't know how they apply to me. But if you tell me what that company or that person's problem was in the first place, and I got that problem, guess what? Now I'm tying my situation to it. It's a more effective way to use a case study. Okay. Now, here's another way to use a case study, guys. And these are gold. We call it the live case study. <clears throat> How many of you have walked out of a meeting, virtual or, or live, and you got in your car or wrapped up the Zoom call and you're like, what I just said in that meeting was freaking gold. Anybody ever do that? Yeah. I think everything I say is gold, but yes. <laughs> or has a pro did a prospect or client ever ask like a super good question that you like, I guarantee others would love to hear the answer I gave. That is the perfect time to hit record on this thing and say, hey. Just got out of a meeting with a, a prospect. They asked an awesome question that I thought you would want to hear the answer of. Here was the question. Here's what I said. We call those live case studies because it just happened. And for anybody who gets stuck on the content, like how to, what, what topics you should talk about, this is the best way to do it. Create content around the conversations you're already having. Makes sense. If anybody knows who Gary Vaynerchuk is, Gary V, he talks about document, don't create. This is documenting. I'm just going to record what I just talked to my client about or my prospect about because I want you to hear it because if you're in the same situation, it's going to resonate with you. One of the best ways to create content, guys, the live case study. Document, don't create. Document, don't create. That 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 right there just rung my bell. That's, I'll give that's, you another example. Working with an agency a few months ago and they were stuck because they're like, oh man, I don't know if we have time to create all this content. And I said, we started chatting about it and all of a sudden it popped up. One of the producers says, you know, we've been recording our webinars and our open enrollment meetings for the last two years. I said, how much, how, how, how much of it have you shared as content? None. I said, guys, you have the entire year's worth of content and the stuff you've already recorded. You don't need to create any new content. Go cut that up. Create clips. You've already created the content. You've documented your open enrollment meetings. You've documented your webinars. You've got all the content you need. That's how we create content, guys. Now we got credibility. 
credibility is tooting your own horn. You got to let us know you're winning. If you follow any anybody on real estate, a uh, real estate agent on social media, what are they posting all the time? Selling homes. Why? Because they want you to know they can sell homes. Now, I saved the lat two, the, these two for last for a purpose, for a reason. This is where the magic is. I believe to win in business today, you've got to create likability and credibility. You cannot have one without the other. If you just create likability, you get caught in the friend zone with your prospects. <laughs> they love you. They're never going to take you seriously enough to hire you. That's where I was early in my career. But if all you do is create credibility, I know you're smart, but I don't know you. If you've ever lost to another advisor, you know you're better with better than. You got mad because you thought it was all credibility and knowledge. They won the likability game. But if you create content that includes personal stories and education, you will have gold. When I say personal stories, these are, this is the part that's uncomfortable for people. Share personal stories that tie into business or life lessons. I don't want to see the, here's my family on the beach. Aren't we having a fun vacation? No, no, no. That's Facebook. But think about all the things that have happened in your life. What are your hobbies? What events have happened in your life that have shaped you? that have taught you lessons. Like I'm a former pro baseball player. There's a lot of lessons baseball has taught. What are the things that have happened in your life that have taught you lessons about business or life? Share those. Why? Because it lets people get to know you. And if they've gone through the same thing, guess what starts happening? You and them start getting closer. And you've never met them before. Now, the other one that's easy, that's going to be easier for you is education. The other job you have is to educate the heck out of your prospects. He or she, he or, I can't talk today. He or she who educates the most wins the most. If you are in a noisy market, which is all of you, he or she who educates the most wins the most. Pick topics based on the questions and objections your prospects have. This is where the book comes in from Marcus Sheridan. Right. Anybody has ever read this, this book, this guy's a pool builder, right? He used to be a pool builder. He wanted to grow his pool building company in Richmond, Virginia. So what did he do? He started writing articles on his website, blogs, just around the questions his clients were asking. Above ground, below ground, fiberglass, concrete. He would just write articles, ask, answering the questions. And he grew that company to the most searched pool builder in the world. Because his content, anytime a pool, somebody in the market to build a pool would go to Google and pose a question, guess who popped up? Good old Marcus Sheridan, River City Pool. Get this, guys. His most read blog, I think it has over 10 million views, is titled The Top Five Pool Builders in Richmond, Virginia. He didn't even list his own company. But where do you have to go to read the article? His website. His website. All of a sudden you see this article and you see this. And before you know it, guess who they're buying the pool from? <laughs> Name of the game, guys. Con educational content. Keep it simple. What are all the questions and objections and conversations you're having with your clients and prospects? That's the content you want to create for education. Keep it simple. This is an example. I have a client, a health insurance client that wrote this article. Is self-funded insurance good for employees? See how simple that is? If you go to Google right now, after the sponsored ads, that's the first article that's on Google. That's searchable. This is how you become very searchable with content. But if you just mix personal stories, education, personal stories, education, personal stories, you will create likability and credibility before you ever meet people. Imagine walking into the room with a prospect or getting on a call and they already feel like they know you. That's how we win this game on the phone today. Remember the modern day country club. Now, the last part is where should you post this? Social media. You know, if you're in the B2B space, you want to be on LinkedIn. 
If you're selling personal lines and you're selling to individuals, you might be on Facebook, might do Instagram. You want to do the same concept with email. Public speaking is a fantastic way to do it. Webinars, podcasts like Jason and I do, it's a way to get that message out far, fast, and wide. Because this is the secret, guys. I'm going to teach you something real quick called compounding content. If you leverage this strategy, everything will change for content. Here's, a, here's an example. Imagine you record a three to five minute video. Educational video. Teach. You take the video, post it on LinkedIn or Facebook. You take it and you put it in an email as part of like an email newsletter. So you have an email list. You upload it to your website on a resources page. And then you post it on your YouTube channel. Now, if you don't have a YouTube channel, I'd tell you to do that. Why? It's the second largest search engine in the world. But look what you just did. You did one video. All you had to do is create one three to five minute video and it showed up four different places. You can do the same thing with articles if you're not a video person. Post on LinkedIn as an article. Send it out as a newsletter in your email. Upload it to your website as a blog. One article just showed up three different places. This is how you create a ton of content without a ton of work. So if you just focus on who am I talking to, what am I saying to them, and where am I saying it, guys, you will build all the credibility and the likability you need to win business. Because what we have seen to become a truth here is content creates credibility. The more I see you, the more credible you become. That credibility gives me the confidence I can hire you, and that confidence leads to me hiring you. You play this game, guys, consistently week in and week out. You will have more business and you know what to do with. I'm out of words, Jason. I know we got three uh, minutes uh, no, to the top of the I, hour. I, no, dude, I love it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I mean, everybody, if you would, you know, throw up your uh, thumbs up sign to because you can't clap because he can't hear you. Um, that, that was some good stuff. You can see that I was about 10 or 15 minutes into the podcast and I'm like, wow, uh, we, we really got to get this guy on here. Um, and to be honest, by the way, Jace, if I could just say at a minimum, guys, make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. If that's okay. I just threw my LinkedIn profile up here. Right. No, I, I do like that. So Andy, thank you very much for your time. Seriously, you, guys. you did a fantastic job.